have some fun because that's why everybody's here. So the other thing, I don't know how much you guys actually read about, you know, what you're about to get yourselves into, but tomorrow morning, um, all three of the parties that are here received a text, which was super great that you all responded. I appreciate that. But you're going to get another text from me tomorrow morning. That text is going to contain a link to all of the recorded data of everything you're about to do tonight. So all of your hard work is actually going to be reciprocated right back to you. There are nine of you here that are going to be using tools because Isabella's got her sucker and I'm not going to take that from her. Um, so I am not going to go through nine to 11 hours worth of data, which is what you guys are all about to record. I will go through it for about two hours and kind of give you, you know, a spot check of what I see in each piece of media. I will also give you links to be able to verify the information of what I will label as evidence. So everything else, those links should help you discover even more in the event you find something else in that set of media. You'll all have my contact info to be able to get in touch with me, either via email or phone number, text, however you guys need to get a hold of me. So that way I can kind of check it out again and see if I missed something. So the first thing we're going to be using, I am going to do a demo with all of these different tools, by the way. Um, when you get your assigned device, hang on to that question that you're going to have, because you're, I can almost guarantee you're gonna have a question. Me and London will be working with all of you one-on-one -on -one to be able to answer those questions one-on-one. -on -one. So that way we can kind of get off the street corner and actually get the investigation started. So quick demo with this guy is thermal imaging. Why would we want thermal imaging inside of a ghost hunt? Nathan. To see if there might be ghosts. Inside How so? Of inside of anyone? I don't know if we're going to go that far. It's a little extreme. So we're literally looking for cold spots. So this is actually looking at heat signatures. That's why everything mostly in there is going to be red, orange, and yellow because it is very warm. And we have mostly ladies tonight. So I did not do names. Oh, my goodness. Let's go. Did I we just, do names? We just did that. Oh, my goodness. It's been a long day. Uh-huh. <laughs> So sorry, guys, because I'm like looking at you folks going, I'm forgetting names already um, and I'll get them. I promise. So with that, I'm the red, orange and yellow guy. Right. So we're literally looking for blue and black spots to be able to move or take shape on their own. That's what we're looking for with this. So with this particular camera, does it capture something every single night? Not necessarily. But, but when we do capture something, it is a holy cow moment. So this is why this camera is going to go to Nathan first, because whenever I hand it to somebody that's not an adult, no offense, buddy. I know it's your birthday and all, but you're not an adult yet. That's usually when we capture something, which is super, super cool. So you're going to hold this guy just like this with your right hand. So that way the camera stays on your left. We're going to do a few starts and stops um, with the software because as great as the hardware is on that, the software is horrible. So I will give you the cues of when to start and stop the video, which is the red square. All right. Let me see if she needs help up. What happened? She's okay. What happened? She fell. She fell in that car. She needs a couple minutes to see if she's, she's okay. All right. So, with that particular camera, you will get the full video back, just so everybody knows. So, um, I will also tell you that I started a, a voice recorder on my bag on my bag and you guys are going to need that voice recording for a couple of reasons i don't actually listen to it unless i need to remember somebody's names which of course having two nights off because of the rain made me forget that i even asked you guys your names already so you're going to need it for the histories because again we're going to the weird spots around charleston that the other ghost tours won't go to the other thing is that so that you guys can listen for evps that's electronic voice phenomenon voices you cannot hear with your own ears so again, I don't listen to the audio recording, so if you find something, you'll have to get in touch with me. We're gonna get next yeah, into the next okay. camera. She's okay. All right, so this next one's a little crazy. Yeah, she's okay. Is she okay? Are you okay? All right, quick demo on this guy. You should not be able to see me in this little tiny black camera right here. It's a little tiny GoPro. So kind of quick demo. Yes, I'm showing you a black screen, super exciting. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna turn on some lights. Uh -huh. there you are. So we are working with 24 infrared lights with this guy. So 
with that said, we are hoping, because you can't see these lights with your own eyes, you need the camera in order to be able to see those lights. The hope here is that we're going to be able to capture something we would not normally be able to see with our own eyes. So we use lasers along with this, and I'm going to pull those out here in just a moment, but the lasers I'll explain once we get there. But this camera is fantastic for actually capturing orbs and any other kind of entities that will be passing over the camera that we wouldn't be able to normally see, again, with our own eyes. So. I'm sorry, I'm losing names, sweetheart. Sherry. Sherry, I thought so, I didn't want to screw it up. So, I already have that recording, um, but again, we'll kind of go over some more things with that specific camera um, at the next location. Uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, we're going to go to the This is the Neuralizer from Men in Black. Nobody's going to remember anything by the time we're done. Nobody got the Neuralizer trip. All right, so, lasers. So you guys can obviously see the green circles on the ground. The reason why we use lasers with that specific camera is because they light up like a Christmas tree in that infrared lighting camera. So in the event that we actually capture something here, I can take the still of that video camera and show you exactly what we caught. We're going to be using two different styles of lasers. The second one is actually going to be giving us red squares. In the event we have red squares and something passes through it, I can take that still from the camera, put it in 3D software, and then give you guys a full 3D view of what we caught. Um, and it also has measurements in there. So I've had this guy, the red one, for about a year now. Um, we haven't caught anything that the software will take. However, tonight might actually be our night. We have caught anomalies in the red grid, but again, you can't see those lasers until something actually passes through it, and it will be fast. So again, it's up to me to find those stills and do the start, pause, start, pause, start, pause. So we're going to go, yes, we're going to go with you on this. So you're going to be using both of those. Okay. So one that will kind of demonstrate as I kind of keep going with the rest of the devices. You always want to make sure you keep those lasers pointed at the ground. Okay. Um, just because we do have a laser law in Charleston, and there were certain spaces where I say, let's try something new, and we'll point them out at a couple of different areas where I know there's not going to be any cars. Okay. 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 I totally want to get Nick arrested. No, we don't want to get Nick arrested. <laughs> Spirit boxes. We're going to be using several different types of spirit boxes tonight. Don't they like hold the ghosts? No. So spirit boxes are a way for us to communicate with the spirit world. So spirit boxes, again, this is kind of like if you watch YouTube videos and, and the TV shows, this is going to be like the white noise, and then your host will tell you what he thinks he heard in the middle of it because it's sweeping through all of the FM radio stations at a quick rate. However, none of you are trained to listen to white noise for two hour periods of time. So what we're going to be doing is we are, I have this slowed down on purpose. I want the radio chatter to come through. I want the song lyrics, the DJs, and the commercials to come through. In the event that we can actually make out what those song lyrics and DJs and lyrics are actually saying, it's a 50-50 shot that I can actually tie it to the location of where we are, a person in history we're, just, we're talking about, or even something going on with one of you. So, again, um, you're going to be wearing an earbud, so you're going to be the only one to hear this in real time. However, this one that she's going to be holding is recording the entire session. So you all are going to get this recording back tomorrow morning, and I will spot check it with about 15 to 20 more markers, and I'll be writing down whatever, is it Evie? whatever Evie hears in real time. So that way all of those notes will be all together and that way you guys won't be missing anything. Thanks, love. Um, I will come to you. Otherwise, we're going to get a lot of interruptions because there's going to be more than just this one out there. Um, these earbuds are yours. I, again, you get to keep your own earwax. So just undo the twist tie here and your volume button is right here. It's the wheel at the top. So you can mess with the volume as much as you want to. Isn't that a great souvenir? <laughs> I know, right? earwax. So, the second spirit box, this one is not going to record, Kimber. Look at that, I got a name right. Did you guys see that? Yes, good job. I know, right? Finally. It's because you got it wrong when she told it. That's probably the So, Kimber, this one's not going to record, so I'm going to be relying on you in real time of whatever you hear to be able to write down to put in the notes. This is not an easy job, just so you know, but again, you get to keep the earbuds. Volume button is right here where the wheel is. See where my finger's moving? I'm making sure it's all the way down. So I need a twist tie, pop an earbud in, and you can get used to how that guy sounds. I'm so Does this do anything by itself? Um, besides capture orbs and ghosts that, that we can't normally see. Okay, I didn't know if it worked, but it's something else. Yeah, we're going to be working with the lasers. The two of you are going to be working together with okay. that and when we get to certain spaces.
Yeah, so what cool. am I trying to do on this? Blue and black spots. I see a lot of those. Are they moving on their own? That's the floor, Nathan. Look up. <laughs> it wasn't the floor. Yes, There's it was a lot the floor. Of oh, that's the sky? So, the oh, next spirit box. Still a lot ahead. of blue ones. We don't actually have to listen to it. There's it's going to give us words from time to time in the center of this screen. They're if you watch the TV though. shows, this would be considered no, an no, ovulus. it's moving. Yeah, right there. Oh, wait, what? I think you just zoomed in. No? So... You see the really yellow, like, white spot over there? Yeah. That means that's the hottest spot that your camera over here is capturing. Oh, all right. So everything that's blue around it is cold compared to that. There you go. Can I, that yeah. makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect job, Lon. I want to be over here. All right, so, again, this particular spirit box is going to give us those words from time to time. There are 36,000 terms and phrases inside of this spirit box. So, it's going to save all of those words and phrases into a list. I'm going to clear out the last tour I did. That was 81 terms and phrases, and we're going to start fresh. They all have timestamps next to them. What I want you guys to keep in mind is this is a phone app. It's meant to try to scare us, and it's meant to be a game of a hoax. So, 80% of this is going to be absolute garbage. It's not going to be anything. Of the 5 to 20%, I'm going to I'm gonna give you the full list, just so you guys know. It is the 5 cool. to 20%, I'll tell you why it's relevant to our space and the history of the historical person we're talking about, and then give you a link to verify the information. So, I'm going to hand this one over to Regina, so that way you can put it in the top of your stroller, because that one you don't really have to do much with. But, you just put it in there? Yep. I don't have to hold it. Nope. Wait, I see stuff moving, like black stuff moving. Right there. Okay. That's fine. Oh, just asking about... I see like black moving. So is it just like me? Um, that's from the leaves because you're uh, pointing it at the ground. All right. So you guys have probably seen these before on yep, there you go. television too, right? K2 EMF meters. Yep. So again, these are relatively simple to use too. We use these to debunk a lot of things. So again, this is going to measure anything electrical, so cell phones, wiring, parking meters, anything like that. So if this thing kind of gives off any kind of rhythm or pulse, um, again, we usually debunk it pretty quickly. What is that? It's a K2 EMF meter. EMF meter. So electromagnetic field. So anything giving off a signal, basically. Because this device is so simple, first off, that one's going to go to you, but you're going to have a secondary job. I normally don't hand this guy to teenagers because they don't know what the hell it is. Okay. So again, <laughs> she's like, really? So. Again, taking hundreds and hundreds of pictures, um, okay. mainly through the lasers, certain spaces that we're in. Obviously, when you see all of the lights that are on there, it just means that it's on. There is no flash on here, so you have to hold very still when you're taking a photograph. Okay. The big button is obviously shoot. The power button is next to it in case it shuts off on its own for no activity. Okay. So again, you're double, double fisted. Thank you. Wait, when, when like the ghost comes up on this, will it show off as like, like a, sh a certain shape or anything, or does it just um, So, do you like video games? Yeah. Do you play any shooting games? The next games? device. This um, one also has yeah, an electromagnetic basically. field meter in okay. it, but so when you're it using is in a digital scope format. On so the, with the, that, the top whatever. number, anything above 2.5 away, I want to kind of know It just shows like on. a shadow, kind of? So, okay, yeah. That's, that's kind of what you're looking at. the second green dot, uh, I'm so, names. Sheila. 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 On Sheila's device. So that's her second green dot. So I want to know what's going on anything above that. The bottom is ambient temperature. If Nathan okay. finds something on his camera, you and I can debunk it by using the probe at the top. The cool thing that everybody loves to use with this guy is because it has a REM pod built into it. Basically, it's going to detect motion. So if anything gets close to that antenna that I just pulled out, it's going to go off. I'm not touching it right now. So the whole point is that there's an EMF field around it, and if it gets interrupted, it's going to go off. There's a bunch of colors in there. So again, you and I are going to talk about that at our next location, but for now I'm going to turn it off so you can just focus on the screen. Is that fair? Again, that's a lot to go on with that device. Your spirit box, sir. That's a little different than the rest of them. So this one is going to sweep through both FM and AM radio stations at the same time. It's going to try to eliminate the white noise that the other ladies are actually listening to in between the radio stations and only give us words. The hope here is that we're going to be able to understand what those words are going to be to actually tie it to the location. This is probably my most accurate spirit box. So it's only going to give you about 10 to 12 terms tonight. However, out of those 10 to 12 terms, 75% of them will be accurate. So about 7 to 9 terms of them will be accurate to our location. So 
The only thing you need to under like know what button to hit on this guy is if the blinking lights are at the top and on the right hand side there's a mute button. It's the only button there. So I already have it on mute and I'll kind of let you know when we're we can be unmuted because certain spaces we're going to be near ponies and that kind of thing. So I will hand that one off to you. That so one's nice and easy to use too. It's going to be rare to unmute, right? What's that? It's rare to unmute. Not necessarily. Okay. Um, it's just certain spaces that I, I like to keep it quiet because of, you know, it's Saturday night, so we should be sure. good most of the night. All right, so everybody's geared up, yes? I, I got everybody? Good, because the bag's really, really light. All right, so, of course, we start here for a reason. Big John's behind me. Of course, it's haunted. So, here's how this story goes. This actually used to be owned by a football player. His name was Big John Kennedy. He played for the 1947 New York Giants. Whenever I'm giving you the history of a location, I will always slow down on specific keywords. So in this location, it would be 47 New York Giants and anything relatable to John or a bar, just so you guys know. But he used to sit in the back of the bar. And he would tell the bartender if the cadets coming over from the Citadel, if they were old enough to drink or not. And one night, two guys come in, they're not old enough to drink. So he has the bartender throw them out. They leave pretty angry, and they come back the next night and try to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. John sees what's going on. He slams down his beer. He gets up and starts pounding these guys right into the floor, beating the heck out of them. A couple of gunshots go off. John gets hit in the neck, but the bullet lands behind him. So, John gets up after being shot. Welcome to Saturday. What happened? Nothing. Gets up after, beating these guys up. after being shot, goes back to the bartender and tells them to get him another beer, get the two guys on the floor and ambulance. Now, normally if I tell you that a building is haunted, you guys all think of some kind of tragic death that occurred in this building. People's cars, just so you know. Um, and again, you'll kind of point your camera towards the ground and then of course you'll just stop taking pictures. Just just so you guys know, some of these spaces are going to be weird. This is Andy's coming. Make sure you're not calling people's really cars, sad. okay? So are you easy. really sad? <laughs> I don't think so. So, okay. All right, so let's not talk about our own health, shall we? Let's the same building, and then I'm going to move us off this corner, I promise. Remember, you got that look of like, are we done getting here? Big John's is allegedly where the first death occurred from that earthquake. Mm -hmm. Piece of the mantle you guys see in the middle of the building broke off, hit somebody in the back of the head, and they say it killed him. And you can see his ghost in the middle of East Bay Street. I say they say and allegedly a lot with that because I don't have any proof. Just a great segue so nobody's thinking about getting sick on the tour, like I said with the headache, the nausea, the dizziness, even though I just brought it up again. So, is everybody ready to go ghost hunting? Yes. Yeah. All right, we're going to start moving so we can get Isabella keep rolling. All right, let's go this way. This here is hot. It's all hot. Like, oh wait, wait, wait. I have no idea how to use this place. That's all you do. So pretty. I think it's for the wedding. Probably. But like, I just look. How do I know it's something up here? Okay, so welcome to your first stop, everybody. Uh, how do this I know if you see? Wait, what? 
um, just so you know. So this base, the history here is really simple, and I did it that way on purpose, so that way you guys can actually learn more about your devices. This is the same red barn that had horses that used to deliver milk and eggs to the residents of Charleston. So, with that said, I will always get those keywords. This one is going to be delivery, milk, eggs, anything relatable to a stable. So let's talk about spirit boxes because we have a lot of them in view tonight or in, in use tonight. So with the spirit boxes, these are these are not like YouTube. This is not a Ouija board. What is everybody's first question they want to ask when they get like devices like this? What do you think? Is it real? Is somebody here? <laughs> is somebody here? Right. So in the event that Evie hears the answer of no, that means somebody's here. So we are not going to be asking yes and no questions all night long. So. The reason being is because paranormal evidence does not come in the form of yes and no answers. We're going after the specifics, just so you guys know. When using spirit boxes for the first time, I like to show people something. Sorry, they're taking out the garbage right now. We're going to find time. Another go. Definitely not. Questions you already know the answers to. For example, if somebody's here, tell me what color the big red barn is. So. Obviously, we're going to be looking and listening for the color red. However, most of you are using song lyrics and DJs to convey messages back to us, and the color, the word red, might not be available. But fire truck, blood, heart, those three things are specifically red. That would make sense to me. What color is the big red barn? Blood. I'm good with that. However, most of the night, I'm going to require that there's at least two pieces of evidence, whether from the same device or not, to kind of verify what's going on. Another example. Let's say Regina's uh, spirit box, it has the word list, has the word art on it, and it obviously doesn't make any sense here. But was it Eric? Yes, sir. So Eric's spirit box gives him the number 40. That doesn't make sense here by itself either. Put them together, Art Faircloth was number 40 on Big John's team. Do you guys see where we're going to be yes. piecing these clues yeah. together now? So again, this is why we like to explain these a little bit further, and you know, now that they're in your hands and, and kind of got the feel for them, let's talk about these cameras real quick. So. Where's my lasers at? So point one of your lasers down on the ground for me. So when you guys are filming these lasers, we already know what these circles look like. I want you to take a step backwards. You're going to be filming where it's going to be you don't film kind lasers. of this. Yeah, you want to she film right lasers. through it. So in case something actually pops through here, if you guys are going to be moving in sync with each other very slowly. The slower you move, the lot easier it's going to be to be able to capture something actually moving. Through. What? So again, yours is already, it was recording, we'll see if stop, we'll start it back up again. And again, I'll keep an eye on it just so you guys know. So again, I, and when you're using them together, you don't want to always cross them. You don't want to cross the string, so that, that one's just so relevant. You want to give them a nice big spectrum on this side and another big spectrum over here. Because like that when she's filming, it could go in here or here. Oh, you mean Yeah, I think that's so that part of like the cooling system in there. Oh, so okay. that's what you're saying. Because like, I, it's like, I was trying to line it up. Like, I was looking back at what they Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. A lot of these people are nuts. I swear. <laughs> nice. Well, he's going to hear it when he listens to it like it, right? Yeah. That one's still in that report. So. Everything on here. I just got that again. Oh, that's always fun. All right, ready for your lasers. Nathan, you're going to try to do two things for us. First off, you're going to try to keep your camera very, very steady. You've been kind of all over the place, up and down. The slower you move, the easier it's going to be able to find those, those cold spots. The first thing you're going to try to do is keep one of us in view. The reason why is because we're going to be the warmest thing out here. So yeah. when there's the warmest thing, you want that array of color. The other thing you have is that blue dot bouncing around the screen. Did you see the blue dot moving around? Yeah, it's, okay. there's like a like gray and blue. So, like yeah, it's got gray. a gray outline on it. So the blue dot is giving you the coldest spot in the frame at that particular moment. So with that said, you want to try to not have the sky in view. Don't film the sky because right. the blue dot will automatically go to the sky because yeah. there's no surface. We're looking for tangible things and then those blue and black cold spots will start moving around our screen. So nice slow movements out of that. Yeah. Um, the only thing I need to do at the next location is show Zoe more about her REM pod, but I kind of want to get us all regrouped back up again because London is kind of going through and, and uh, separating the whole group up. So we're going to get away from this location and not talk about ponies and football players anymore. Is that fair? <laughs> let's go learn some much deeper history. So let's head up to the next spot. Where? There's something really cold in the trash can. Where is that recording? No, it's recording the radio stream. Oh, the radio. Yeah, so it's literally sweeping all the radio stations at a quick rate. It's only recording that, none of us. FM? 
Yeah, FM only. FM modulated. Modulated? Yep, pretty much. That's exactly what it's doing. All right, let's go up to our next spot and get into so much deeper history. Is that all like the corn system? Should I ask him? I, I have to hold the water. What? Oh. Uh -oh. So what are, what is? Hold it the way you're holding. I don't. You're fine. Come on. It's heavy and I don't really understand. There's something weird in that way. You don't have to film the whole, the whole time. Look, hold it like this, close to your body. used to be something. This used to be the Pinckney Mansion site. So, Eliza and Charles lived here. Their mansion sat in the front of this space. Eliza's garden was lined up with five church restaurants over there and came all the way across. And we are standing in the servant and slave quarters for the home. So, kind of like to give you guys the layout of the land before we actually get moving. So, for those of you with cameras, we already talked about vehicles. So, we do not film vehicles or take pictures of vehicles at all. If somebody's actually coming through the lots, you want to make sure your camera's pointed in the opposite direction. Don't film people like a YouTuber. So, kind of imagine if it was your vehicle standing here. But what was this space? First off, I should let the spirit boxes know, I am not going to be giving you questions like what color is George Washington's white horse, like what we did over there with the big red barn. You're going to get your answers from your spirit boxes. Those of you with the extra earbud, feel free to share that other earbud with somebody from your, your, your party, so to speak. You can also intermingle your devices, by the way, among your party. So everything's been sanitized before we got down here, so just kind of keep it within your party, please. Um, so, who the heck were these people? Charles and Eliza had a son named Charles, they had a nephew, and a, and a nephew named Charles. Oh, okay. That's three different Charles. Yeah. You guys watch track. You guys know where I look for secondary verifiers now? I need to know who the heck we're talking to. So, if you hear the name Charles, I need another clue. So, the son and the nephew are signs of, of the Constitution for South Carolina. That's a pretty big deal for us. However, I hate politics more than all of you, so I'm going to move on. So, she's like, yes, I don't want to talk about politics either. So. Eliza, way cooler anyway. Eliza married Charles at a young age according to today's standards. So if you're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, you are not going to hear numbers like 12 and 14, just so you know. I said today's standards, so kind of keep that in mind. The reason I bring this up is because Charles, her husband, was over double her age. Kind of creepy back then, kind of creepy now, just so you guys know. But anyway, she married him because her father, over in England, thought he was dying, and he wanted to see all of his children one last time, so he's trying to bring all of his kids home. Eliza didn't think he was dying, so she stayed put. It's 1744. You don't get married for citizenship or a green card. We're not even a country yet. So, she did marry him out of love. And with that said, she was right. Her dad did not die right away, and he starts sending her gifts over from England to this space. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. You guys have been in Charleston for at least an hour that I know of. You've seen the word indigo somewhere, I promise. So indigo is a plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue jeans blue. Looks like Eric, you might be wearing it tonight. I normally have only one example. Um, nobody wears blue jeans anymore. So, Kimber, you got blue jeans on? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you got denim on. So she didn't know what to do with these seeds when she got them. So she learned from her slaves how to keep them cultivated because, no, it's not always hot here. Once she had it figured out and experimented with these seeds, she was able to move it to another plantation they had in Mount Pleasant, just north of here. She calls her dad and says, rice plantations are going downhill. We can make a killing with, these, with this indigo. We now have an international businesswoman during colonial times, something absolutely unheard of. That's Eliza's business. Let's get into the weird stuff, because that's why everybody's here, right? So, those of you with spirit boxes, uh, each party is going to get a box. set of questions. So, Kimber, I'm going to start with you. You can ask what happened to the mansion, and if you get an answer, 
obviously ask what year or what date that actually happened. We're going to see if it actually pops up tonight. What, what happened? What happened to it first? So hopefully you'll get an answer of what actually happened to it because it's not here anymore. Well, not yet, not yet. Everybody's going to spread out. <laughs> Everybody's getting a set of questions. Okay, Nathan, can Got you get it. her water, okay. please? Eric, so I'm going to put two sets of questions between you and the wife. So, basically, the both of you can ask what the spirit boxes you have. The easiest questions are, Eliza's the second wife named Eliza, by the way. So, both Eliza wives have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. We try to find out what that maiden name is. And so that way we know which, which Eliza we're actually dealing with. Okay. Where's my other spirit boxes? Evie, you're going to go after the children. I told you there's at least one. His name was Charles, correct? So if there are more, you can ask how many and what their names are. Don't poke the bear, meaning there's a tragedy among those children. Do not ask what that tragedy was. If you do, all activity will stop, including anything that's going on with Graham's device over there, the little bit of readings we've already got. Uh, what other spirit boxes do we have out here? Should I pretty much got them all? Um, so... You have a camera, it's not a spirit box. No, his is a spirit box. It's He's a spirit a box. Mount the camera. And you flip the camera backwards. So you, oh, it's now upside down. There you go. Keep the camera on the left. So that way we don't have an upside down video. All right, so anybody else, if you get answers to the questions that I gave you, you can start asking about Eliza's death. That's where she's really open. You can ask her how old she was when she died, what she died from, uh, where she's buried, and which U.S. president was a pallbearer at her funeral. These are all very specific questions. So we are going to spread out inside this lot. Unfortunately, it's Saturday, which means there's a lot of cars in here. So we are not going to go in between cars. We're not going to be filming vehicles. We're going to kind of use the middle of the space or even stay back here. Um, again, when people are walking through, make sure your cameras are steered the opposite way. So I do have to work with Zoe to show her how to use that REM pod. But we're going to spread out and see what we can capture. And I'm going to be bouncing around with everybody to see what's going on with your devices. And I'll be writing down lots and lots of notes. So we're good with lasers in this location. Uh, we just want to make sure they stay on the ground and not on vehicles, because those will set off car alarms. So you need to stay with me. Everybody else can spread out. And let's get those spirit boxes cranked up. Let's see what we can find in here. What's she here? What's, that? What's Eliza's maiden name? What's Eliza's maiden name? Itchy. Itchy. We got an answer. Itchy. All right. This is new uh, sound. Okay. Hey, what do I do? Do I just Nick, right? Yeah. Ask Nick. What does it say on the screen? They never did an equal down here, so it's very possible. Even like lyrics to songs and stuff, it comes out with certain words. Oh, no. Is that blue? Yeah, it's blue. Okay. Are you going to be using the How do we find out what the maiden name is? The one closest to you. It's like you're talking to a person. Just go to different places. Just walk around the parking lot and just be like, hey, Eliza, what was your maiden name? Go ahead. Hey, Eliza. Hey, Eliza. And that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for a weird motion or for it to go to a specific color and stay there. Don't yell. Nathan, don't yell. You don't need to yell.
something to let my dad know so that he can write it down. Yeah? And he'll listen to it, but he'll hear it when he listens to it too, right? He also needs to know what he's looking for. I got you. Wait till he gets finished over there. All right. You can't interrupt him. I'm like, I, I'm like, Eliza, what's, what's your middle name? Straight. Straight. After he put it to his shoulder. Hey, Eliza, what's your maiden Show name? Show off your strength. Come on, muscles. Show your muscles. Hey, Eliza, what's your maiden name? Straight. Show your muscle with the phone in there. Leave her alone. Hey, Eliza, what's your maiden name? Hey, but let me see that spirit box. Let me see what we got going on in there. So I, I put it on my shoulder and it's a like string. Because I actually withhold information on purpose so that way you guys actually have a genuine experience. That's good. Yeah, this is everything that we've gotten since I turned it on. So Scratch would have been way back at Big John's and then of course it just progresses and that's why I look at all the timestamps when I'm looking through this in the morning. Lincoln. Yeah, most of it's gonna be garbage. Yeah. Lincoln just said something about a president that happened here. That president. There was a polar bear that was at the funeral. What's your maiden name? It's not Lincoln specifically. It's like way too late. I don't know. The Paul bear was a president. Be wow. Paul bear became a president. Just so you know, there's people walking through. Say that. Okay. Watch her. Oh, we know them. Oh, it's the girls? Eliza. Don't, Eliza, yeah. how did you die? <laughs> angel, angel. Oh, or angle. One now? Angle. Angle. Yeah, it's angle. Um, angle. Okay. I have no idea. So angle. Like say like. Oh, okay, hey, Eliza. Eliza. What angle did someone film you? No. <laughs> what am I? Uh, what angle did you die in? Hey Eliza, what angle did you die in? Hey Eliza, what angle did you die in? Angle. Random words. Angle. Research. Hey Eliza, do you know what a right angle is? Do you know your angles? Me Angle. Ask her, again. Ask her how she died. I just 
Allies, are you from outer space? Who is it to me? Huh? She's not from outer space. Well, I'm she was a regular person, just like all of us. So you have to talk to her hey, like you would talk to me. Um, not a name. Maybe she died upstairs? No. Yeah, me and Terry William got the garage last upstairs locked in the What's the moon face tonight? Um, we're past the full moon, so I want to say we're probably down to about 69 or 74 percent, like okay. somewhere in that bracket. Mm. So, we don't have another like major phase until the 28th, which is a new moon, so. You know, I only, I only keep track of full and then. Yeah. So. Okay. Hey, wait, yeah. Hey, I hey, hey, hey Liza, did you have any moon rocks in your house? When did you die? Or hey, Liza, where did you die? Hey, Liza, did you die on the moon? Hey, Liza, have you ever been on the moon? It's not Siri, you don't need to talk into it, do you? Hey Eliza, have you ever been on the moon? No, Nathan, ask real questions. Why would it be, why would there be moon? Who knows? Um, because... Maybe she died when there when it was nighttime or something, Wait. right? It's hey Eliza, did you, did you die when it was a full, full moon? It's also just an app, so it could be BS. Right, 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 right. So, we like to say that 85% of it means something. So how do you know if yeah. it does mean something? Research. <laughs> Lots of it. So you'll look up all these words? Is that what it is? Yeah. Or? Like, according to what spots we're at, like, since my dad has the, like, voice recorder on him, we're able to tell, like, when each Wait. word was said. So we can... Oh, gotcha. I kind of match it up. When I went to that bottle, it gave me, like, five things, like, upstairs and all of stuff. So what if I go to this bottle? Wait, Nathan, don't walk over there, please. Come here. There's a lot of wires over there. Yeah, please don't walk to the wires. Stay here and don't talk We're into it. Just talk normally. Eliza, how old are you? Eliza, what, what year did you die? Eliza, do they have cars when you die? Did they have what? Yeah. <laughs> do you we'll know when you... the Declaration of Independence was signed? Sorry, that was why do Seventeen seventy six. Oh, so, I still remember. No, they have like the horse the... and buggies. That's it. Yeah, horse and buggies. Careful. I'm lighting up. You're lighting up. What does oh, well, that mean? Fake really <laughs> <laughs> it till you make it. <laughs> what is your favorite no planet? No, Eliza, Ethan. What's your name?
It's a car coming. Don't film. All right. See if that's, that's how you die. <laughs> Papa! Wait, what was her name again? Eliza. What? <laughs> Say Eliza, what was her maiden oh, yeah, name? Hey Eliza, what was your maiden no, okay. name? Right, so okay. Hey Eliza, what was your maiden name? First thing I always like to do is show you kind of the mugshot of the people we're trying to hunt down. So, so this is Eliza Lucas Pinkney. Lucas would have been the maiden name that you guys would have been hoping to hear. The first wife's name was Eliza Lamb Pinkney. So Lamb and Lucas being Wait, the maiden names. And Tom. Eli this Eliza was 22 years old when she married Charles at the age of 45. That's a lot and better two. than 12 and 25, and isn't it? Yeah, I thought so. Because again, colonial times, she would have been married at a much younger age. So, we didn't get any answers to what actually happened to the mansion, but this is the only photograph we have of the mansion. This is after the Great Fire of 1861. This is the only photograph of where you're standing right now. So, obviously, fire would have been a term that we would get in this location. We have had the full date come up. This actually happened December 11th, 1861. So we'll get 12, 11, 61, all in the same night. Well, Do you guys kind of see where I'm looking for like the sure. things that you're listening for? So every tour guide in town is going to tell you about a great fire of whatever year it happened in. The fire I'm talking about is one of the biggest that Charleston has ever been through. You are standing on the green dot of this map. This fire literally went from one side of the peninsula, where we're standing, to the other. Again, you're standing on the green dot, just so you guys get the That's gist of... Nuts how big this fire actually was. Five to nine million dollars worth of damage in 1861. So, that's a lot of damage, just so you guys know. Now you guys didn't give me the numbers 12, 11, or 61, or even the term fire. Now we did hear that girl's on fire. Yeah, you when, just when we got over here? Okay, perfect, so I'll write that one down. So again, we'll be looking for things, you know, wrapped around that fire specifically. As far as the children go, there's four of them. So who had the, the children question? You did, even you did. said, let me think. Yeah, so she asked how many children that they had, and it said, let me think. So, just very odd. Normally we'll have a very specific number. That number is four. So Charles, I already told you about. And as far as the rest of them, let's go through them very quickly. Thomas was the next one. He fought in a Revolutionary War battle, in the Battle of Camden. He was shot in his left leg, and he was captured by the British. These are all terms that I look for when Thomas's name would actually show up here, just so you guys know. When he was released, he was left on a cane the rest of his days. So the word cane and handle and those type of things will show up around Thomas's name. The word battle, left, leg, any of those kind of terms that pop up. But again, I look for at least two or more to be able to verify that we actually had Thomas here with us. The next child, baby George, you can already see where this one's going. This is the tragedy I actually, none of you actually cooked the bear with. That tragedy, basically, George doesn't have a headstone or a grave. The interesting thing about that is that my theory behind that whole process is it's the middle of the 1700s. It's a possibility they would have mummified that baby and kept him right here in the home, waiting for his mother to pass away. Oh, it's going to get even weirder when I talk about Eliza's death. But one more child. Her name was Harriet. She married in Corey. Now, Myrtle Beach is in Gray County, so that kind of gives you an idea of where she lived. It wouldn't have been a two and a half hour car ride for her to go see her daughter. It would have been a lot of letter writing. In the event we do get Harriet here, her name will show up and things wrapped around writing. Quill, ink, paper, published. All of those type of things will pop up around Harriet's name. 
Eliza's death. Who ha oh, I gave that to the entire group if you wanted to ask. She was 70 years old when she passed away. The number 70 does pop up here quite a bit. Seems like an odd number to come through a radio station, but obviously I hear it often enough to know like it's not uncanny for me to hear the number 70. That was in 1793. 93 will show up here quite a bit, just so you know. First, and also, 70 is a long time to be living during colonial times. She was going to Philadelphia, going to get treatments for whatever they thought she had. It turned out to be breast cancer. They didn't know what breast cancer was in 1793, at least not full-heartedly yet. We're going based off of her medical records now. We have gotten the answer of breast cancer of when, what did you die from several times in this location. Anybody want to take a guess at who the president was that was the pallbearer at her funeral? Now that you know the year, 1793? Did she hear how she Nope, no answers? All right. No history books, well, apparently. No. Nope. George Washington. Dang. Sorry, London, you're too slow. <laughs> I zoned out, my bad. Washington, at his own request, wanted to pay homage to Eliza based on her indigo, hoping to get our country started. That was why he was the pallbearer at her funeral. It was an honor for him to do so. Now, I did play one subliminal trick on you when we got here. I told all you spirit box folks, I'm not going to be telling you questions or giving you questions like what color is George Washington's white horse, like we did over there with the big red barn. I do that on purpose, so that way you guys all have George Washington in the back of your brains. Now, none of you gave me George Washington as an answer, even when I asked again. So you all passed with a fail. Good job. I was thinking it. I was thinking it. I almost did it. Yep. <laughs> I do it purposely. So that way, and no more subliminal tricks tonight, I promise. So this location, normally, would be considered an intelligent haunting. Now, granted, what you guys gave me here in real time, there's not much for me to work with. But we're going to see what I can find in the morning when I'm spot checking. Because again, it seems like we're getting used to these spirit boxes and how they actually work. Um, so, the next base is a residual haunting. Now, it is cobblestone. How are the wheels on the stroller? We'll get by. Okay. So it's a residual haunting. Spirit boxes, I want you all listening for names along the way and inside the alley. Tell me what you get once we're inside the alley. We can turn this off now. Why? We're not in this area. No, don't tell me that. Eliza's not a name you would hear on the radio very often. But again, spirit boxes, listen for those names and anything else that might actually pop through. The other thing, the reason why I'm doing that is I'll explain it more further once we're inside the space. Again, very unique area that we're going to. EMF detector, so that would be Zoe and Sheila. Your devices are going to be giving you false positive because of the parking meters. You can ignore the readings, you can turn off your REM pod. So, um, with that said, so turn off that REM pod for me so that way it's not giving any false positives. Um, Spirit Boxes, this is really your time to shine. We want to stop that video, so go ahead and hit the red square on there for me, Eric. That's why we're going to be brief here. We're not going to be very long at all. So, with this location where the, that last crosswalk we actually came over, guys, that's where the original Charlestown wall used to be. We are standing on one of the original streets of Charlestown. Charleston used to be called Charlestown. It was a walled city. So, people used to live here. I get the same names over and over and over again in this location. Now, you guys didn't hear them tonight because right now in the middle of that loop, um, that loop is about six to seven weeks long. Every six to seven weeks, I hear the names Benjamin and John from through your spirit boxes. And it's not me that's hearing it, it's my guests, you, that hear it. So, John seems like a very common name. But when I say people used to live here, I'm not talking about a lot of people, like hundreds of houses down this alleyway. Only like two to six people lived here at a time. So Benjamin and John both lived here in 1801. I don't have anything else specific about Benjamin or John, other than the fact that I keep getting the names over and over and over again. So, John will give us his last name we tomorrow. His last name is Johnson. John Johnson was his name. So, we'll get Ben, John, and Johnson. All in the same night within that six to seven week long loop. So, we place your device on the ground on top of a brick and let me know if the red numbers say anything. Just pick any random brick. How much? 5.7. 5.7? 9.7. What does it say now? 9.4. So let it sit there for about a minute. Let me know if it hovers. So kind of keep an eye on it for me. These bricks, guys, here's why I think I'm getting those same names over and over again. And why this is what we would call a residual ghost. This is not a space where we can actually ask questions. It's just like on a, watching a movie. These bricks are Belgian blocks. They're made of granite. And you guys have all heard the term limestone before. Limestone mm -hmm. is said to stir up any kind of paranormal activity. 
granite comes straight from the earth, but is not supposed to hold an electrical charge like 9.7 milligauss that we're reading right now. And again, I've been doing the experiment of placing it on a brick for about three weeks now, and it's different every single night. Sometimes we don't get anything. We're supposed to get about a 1.1 reading because that's average from the earth. So I think we're dealing with what we call the stone tape theory here, which is basically the bricks we're standing on have been here for hundreds of years. They're hanging on to the consciousness of the Great. memories that actually occurred here. And they're spinning I back to us every break. six to seven weeks for whatever I reason that loop is in that size. I don't have all the answers. It's a speculation at this point. But that 9.7, very significant. Has it gone up or down? How far down? At a nine. So we're hovering around nine milligauss. That's crazy to me. You can go ahead and pick up your device. So before people lived here, and we're not going to spend a lot of time here, again, we're going to move on pretty quickly. The Freemasons had a Masonic Lodge here, hence the name Lodge Alley. So, where the way you made them? Oh, uh, they got sidetracked. Okay. I know they were here a minute ago. Yeah, it was hard to do the cobbles, and she woke up, so she's going like somewhere. Gotcha. Um, so, Fragile. we will get terms wrapped around the Freemasons here from time to time. Obviously, Freemason, Mason, Illuminati love to show up on those red sphere boxes, just so you know. I got it six times last year and three times so far this year oh. where I was actually able to verify it. My question to you is this first off, who the heck is saying the word Illuminati on the right. radio? The second is why am I only hearing it while we're in this space? So again, Freemasons were here. Every once in a while, Nathan's device, his word list will actually give us the word symbols. So mm -hmm. when symbols obviously being very relatable to the Freemasons. So the next phase we're going to is our radios to sure. another alley. However, I can't take you all the way through it like what we're doing here. It is a very weird space, and I can't take you through it because I can move it out of it. You guys have all the flinty lights and the noise makers and all that stuff. So, I'm going to be cutting through a neighborhood to be able to get to that next space. And I'll tell you why I got to get out of there, obviously, once we get there. Um, but when we get to that space, I'm going to tell you the story of what goes on in that location because it will stir up a lot of activity and we'll be relatively close to it for the rest of our time together. And hopefully, we'll be able to capture things from that story from the rest of our time together. But again, as we cut through the neighborhood, both videos will need to be stopped so because we're cutting through the neighborhood. You don't record in residential neighborhoods, and the lasers will definitely be out of the game. So basically, you will cut your laser, but we're going to go through the rest of this alley. Did she want to catch up to us? Like, mm, I think she's going to chill out somewhere. Okay. I was going to say, I mean, you can always let her know where we're at, or I can kind of give you directions so she can catch okay. back up if you want. All right, I'll let you know if she contacts me. Absolutely. Like, I'm going to keep checking on your list. I'll check on it again when we get to the next phase. So let's go ahead and take off the rest of these notes. Whoa. I'm good. I'll never get to this. If you have the most interesting <laughs> box. Car coming, like car, car coming. You might die. Maybe that's what I was talking about. No. <laughs> I think I know what that's going to be. Can you say that the full time group all died in the ride? No, it's a huge.
bad for ratings. Stay here. Your stomach? Oh, stomach. Well, we're, we're not looking at the words now, we're looking at them uh, in the next spot. Where did these words come from? So, have you seen like many ghost shows? Not really. So basically there's a theory that ghosts can alternate or like mess with any electronics. So yeah. if you have uh, the professional electronics that like are meant to pick up this stuff, but they can mess with anything. They can take battery percentage, they can like, they can like alter it. But we'll see. words show up on your word list? Um, Give me the last three or four terms. What? Give me the last three or four terms at the very top. Awake, pause, spear. No, nothing at all. Anybody hear anything along the way here? He said hi guys. Hi guys. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it must be from the north. We don't say hi, hi guys in the south. Sure. Okay, we were walking through the first alleyway. You heard the word alleyway or alleyway because we're actually I thought you you saw the word alley on your spirit box because you said we're in the alley and I you know normally whoever has that spirit box usually just repeats whatever shows up on the word list well no no I didn't have alley right, I just... right. yeah because we checked it once we got there all right so we're going to be discussing first off this little tiny building over here with the crosses on it first off those are not crosses those are earthquake bolts actually I can guess I can normally wait well, it's got houses so bolts yeah bolts it's got houses so earthquake bolts, if you're unfamiliar with those, basically they're turnbuckles. In the event we have another earthquake like what we did in 1886 that I talked about at the beginning of the tour, you 
You can turn those turnbuckles and it's supposed to straighten the building back up again to help with the damage from the earthquake. It's a great idea, it just doesn't work. The only reason I bring these ones up specifically is because these are the first set of earthquake bolts that Charleston put in because this is the oldest government building in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. It was the gunpowder magazine for seven different wars in one rebellion. Now, we talked about kind of the Charlestown walls when we were over at the um, Lodge Alley location. The street behind me where that parking garage is, that's where the wall stood. It went up past the powder magazine and started going south towards the battery, locking the gunpowder magazine into the corners of the wall on purpose. If it gets attacked from pirate ships or revolutionary warships from three blocks away, it's kind of a hard time getting through those 32 inch thick walls. The walls are that thick. So we're going to pretend that the cannonball goes all the way through and blows up the gunpowder. There's sand in the roof that you see on those red shingles. <laughs> let alone where tourists are actually allowed to be toured with. So, again, this building was finished in 1713. Our story begins in 1708. Follow me, there's a lot of twists. We're talking pirates, so of course there's going to be a lot of twists. Young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Anne Cormac. She moves here from Ireland with her dad and his mistress. The mistress is her mother. Is everybody with me so far? All right, good deal. So, the three of them are running away from his wife. Just so you There's know, how angry was she? Um, uh, you have to leave your country. Parking lot, if you want me to take him over there. Elaine in Georgetown. Oh, I'll take him. Dad yeah. buys a plantation, mom dies from the turkey. Away from his wife. And she's like, whatever, I'm a pirate, let's go. Let's put two and two together. She's a female in his quarters, which is eventually going to get pregnant. You know, have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew, right? Somebody's going to figure out that she's a girl. So, he drops her off in Cuba. We'll have the baby over here. These are friends of mine that help you out. Come back later, we'll figure it out comes back, but there's no baby. We have no idea what happens to this child. The second thing is, is that she's just like a female. She doesn't give a damn anymore about hiding her gender from the crew or Jack. And this makes Jack pretty angry. While she was away giving birth to Jack's baby, he captured another fire crew and they're down below deck. Anne's gonna go for him, because that's what Anne does, guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female dressed like a guy to be part of the fire crew that Calico Jack has captured. So now we have two females dressed like males on the same ship. This young lady's name is Mary Reed. Her and Mary become friends, talk to them, never know for certain, and that's just the way the history of that one goes, but her and Mary become friends. The British find out where they are. They send their entire fleet of ships to take down one pirate ship. Anne and Mary are the only two not drunk enough to come up and fight with their one bullet flint box, because they probably don't know how to use the cannons. They're obviously going to get taken by the British. As they're being arrested, she looks at her captain in her bow, Calico Jack, and you should have fought like a man instead of being hanged like a dog. So the word dog is obviously prominent here. I know we had the word dog on the word list, but that was yep. way before the um, But the judge, his name is Nicholas Law. that you hear my name here, it's in relative in one of three ways, me being... Weird ones, I got like relax, vinegar, and corn. Well, corn would have been one of the crops from the pirates. So we'll kind of um, see if anything else pops up around their harvesting. Um, that actually 